I finally got the long-term residency for Korea, specifically the F27 visa. And today I'm going to explain to you guys how I got it while putting my makeup on. So before I explain how I got the F27 visa, also called the long-term residency visa, I quickly want to tell you guys what exactly that visa means. So there are different types of visas in Korea that allow you to work in this country. And most of them basically bind you to your sponsor, which means they bind you to a company or to your spouse if you're married. And the F27 visa doesn't bind you to anyone, so you are free to work whatever you want. With the marriage visa, you're also free to work in whatever field you want. So for your career, the best visas are the ones who start with an F. All those are long-term residency or marriage or whatever, and they allow you to work anything you want. Now, since I'm not eligible for the marriage visa, I wanted to apply for the point system visa and that's the one I got. Before the F27 visa there is this point system and in order to be branded the F27 visa you need to get at least 80 points in this point system. Wait there's a military plane passing through. Let's wait for it. Okay. Where was I? Yeah, you need at least 80 points. In this point system, there are several categories where you can receive points. And you will get minus points if you have been a criminal in your country. I needed to prepare so many documents in order to receive that visa and I made a list of all the documents that I needed. Let me read it to you because I cannot memorize this. So, I needed proof for my professional experience abroad. I needed the complicated application form, that's easy. I needed a colored passport photo. It has to be from the recent six months because I gave them a photo that was older and they made me take a new picture during my appointment. Then you need your university diploma. If you only have a copy of your diploma, you need to get it notarized. Then if your university is a top ranking university, you will get bonus points. So bring some type of document that proves that, like a screenshot of the website with the rank. Then I had to bring proof of my exchange year here in Korea. So if you've ever studied in Korea, that also gives you bonus points. Prepare documents to prove that. Then you also need a notarized criminal record from your home country. If you're working in Korea, you need to bring a contract. You also need to bring your house contract. You need to bring the table with the point system and fill it out, like circle all the points that apply to you. Then you need to bring a certificate of tax payment and a certificate of income. Last year, I actually tried applying for the F visa, but there were three reasons why I failed. I had issues with three documents and don't make the same mistake like me. So basically the first one was my tax payment and income certificate. You basically need to work a full year in Korea and then by May or June of the next year you will get your tax file. And I didn't have that file yet last year so that was one of the reasons why I didn't get the visa. Another one was that I didn't have my criminal record which you need to get from your home country and you need to get it notarized so you cannot do it from here. You need to go back. And my third reason was that I only had a copy of my bachelor diploma which was not notarized. So you either need the original of your diploma or a notarized copy. Because of those missing documents, I had to make a little trip to Switzerland. I went to Switzerland in April this year. Once I arrived in Switzerland, I first went to the university to get a, like a proof of realness for a copy of my bachelor diploma. And then I took that proof of realness of my bachelor diploma to the ministry in my university's 
city, which is Zurich, and got their notarization. In my case, because both Switzerland and Korea are part of the Hager Agreement, I was able to get a simple notarization, which is called Apostil. The notarization called Apostil only works if your country is part of that Hager Agreement. Then I also, this one I could do online, I ordered my criminal record with a notarization. Luckily, I was able to directly order it with a notarization. I didn't like, have to go to places. That was really convenient, which I'm not used to from Switzerland. So I ordered that and I received it within um, like a week, I think. Mind you, the criminal record should not be any older than three months, the time you apply for the F visa. So make sure you get the timing right. After I got all my documents from Switzerland, I flew back to Korea and I got my tax documents from the tax office. Another military plane. Oh, this one's loud. You guys can't imagine how loud it gets when I open the windows. Oh, I went a little overboard with the blush. And at the tax office, I got my income certificate and my tax payment certificate for 2022. After gathering all my documents, I went to the immigration office. You need to go to the immigration office that is in your area. And when I went there, I was so nervous that I forgot something again or that I have to wait another year. I mean, it wouldn't be the end of the world, but I really wanted to get my F visa. So I went to the immigration office. And when I arrived and gave them all my documents, they said that my picture is the same one that I've used in my previous ARC. The ARC is the residence card that they give to foreigners. So I had to take a new one because officially your picture shouldn't be older than six months. Luckily, I was able to get the picture shot there and it doesn't look that bad. Wait, let me show you. Like when I took it there, I thought it would be super ugly, but it looks pretty good. Good, right? Can you see it? I like it. I submitted all my documents and then I had to wait for around two weeks maybe. And then they sent me my ARC and luckily I got it. The F2 visa. <laughs> Okay, now that you guys know how I got my visa, I quickly want to go through the point system table in detail so you guys have a rough estimate about what this looks like and if you have 80 points or how you can get to 80 points. First of all, there is a requirement that you have to have stayed in Korea for at least three years with a valid visa. There are exceptions to this rule, so if you earn more than 40 million a year or if you have a recommendation by the central administrative agency and there are some other exceptions that I'm not understanding now that I'm reading it. Anyway, if any of these applies to you then you don't need to have stayed in Korea for three years before you apply for the F27 visa. Now let's move on to the table. As I have mentioned before, the first category is your age. If you're between 25 and 29, you get the highest amount of points. So that would be 25 points. If you're younger, like if you're between 18 and 24, you get 23. And if you're older, it slowly decreases. The next category is your education. So if you have a science and engineering degree, you get more points than if you have an arts degree. If you have a master's degree, you get more points than if you only get a bachelor's degree. As for Korean ability, the higher your topic score, the more points you get. Like there are two ways to prove your Korean language ability. You, either you do the topic test, but the topic test expires every two years. The second way is the KIIP, which is the Korean Immigration and Integration Program. This program is free for everyone who stays in Korea with any type of visa. And if you complete that one up to level five, then you get full points here as well. And the KIIP does not expire. So I really recommend that one for anyone who wants to do the F visa. The next category is income. As for income, of course, the more you earn, the more points you get. 
This is the part where most people struggle because a lot of people who model or act here are hustling very hard and it's hard to reach an amount of income that gives you a relevant amount of points. Now the last category is bonus points. For bonus points, there are several types. The first type is your tax payment. Um, the more tax you pay, the more bonus points you get. Then also, if you have completed the KIIP, the good thing is you don't only get points for Korean language ability, you also get 10 bonus points. That's a lot. And you can also get extra points for professional experience abroad, for volunteer activities inside Korea, and for study abroad experiences in Korea. Of course, you need to prove all of these things. If you have ever illegally stayed in Korea or done any crime, whether it be in this country or in your home country, you will get minus points. So please don't be a criminal. But I know a lot of people have like illegal stay records because they got confused with their visa status. So that will leave a mark. I did go through this table with you, but I didn't go through it that much in detail. But I really hope that it was at least a little helpful. I feel like... Oh, I haven't even finished my makeup. I feel like this video is way more messy than I wanted. Like I wanted it to be really structured, but visas are such a complex topic. So if there are any unanswered questions that you have, please leave them in the comment section and I will try to answer them in my next video. If you don't have any questions, just press like and the subscribe button. I will be forever thankful and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.